Welcome back to the Transform Your Mind to Transform Your Life radio, podcast, and television show. I'm your host, Life Coach Marnie Young, and sitting in the guest chair today is Dr. Victoria Weissman, celebrity cosmetic dentist. And uh, Dr. V, which is where I'm going to call her, um, and I are going to talk on the power of a smile. Now, I pride myself on my smile, and it's something that everybody notices. So this is perfect for anyone that wants to know the power of a smile. And if you don't have a great smile right now, Dr. V and I are going to tell you how to get one and why is it so important. Welcome, Dr. V. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. You're very welcome. Yes. Thank you so much for being on the show and um, talking to us about the power of a smile. All right, so let me give you guys a short introduction. Um, the youngest graduate of NYU Dental is Dr. Victoria Weissman. It, she is a celebrity cosmetic dentist with a passion for all things oral health, beauty, wellness, and building confidence. Her practice, Cosmetic Dental Solutions, is female founded and run and features bi coastal locations in New York and Beverly Hills. Known for changing the lives of patients with beautiful transformations and healthy smile, Cosmetic Dental Students, I mean Studios, serves patients from around the globe with primary focus on smile makeovers, dental, facial, aesthetics, and anti-aging dentistry. An artist at heart, Dr. V, not Dr. Weissman, known as Dr. V, chose cosmetic dentistry because it is the perfect blend of art and science. Amazing. Yes. Love, love the smile. All right. So as we as we dive in, Dr. V, um, as, a, as a celebrity cosmetic dentist, can you tell us the power of a smile? You have done smile makeovers for several prominent organizations, including Miss America, Miss Universe, and the New York Giants cheerleaders, as well as celebrities, media personalities, and other prominent individuals. What exactly is a smile makeover and how does it affect our confidence? Yes. Oh my gosh. And I love how you call it the power of a smile because that's exactly right. I see it in my practice every day um, that the power that transforming your smile can have on your confidence and how you feel about yourself, on your mindset. You know, what I focus on in my practice is cosmetic dentistry exclusively. So that means beautifying the smile, restoring the smile to what it once was, or even better, um, bringing health, beauty, harmony, and symmetry back into the smile. And what I see every day with patients is this newfound sense of confidence, you know, stepping out into the world, just feeling better about themselves and really eliminating this insecurity that they may have had for years and years and years, you know, it becomes a non-issue. You know, my goal is to have people sort of go about their lives and not even think about that insecurity, you know, because that can be such a limitation for a lot of people. And it's not, this is just smiles, but people have that with other things. It could be weight, it could be other things in their life. And what I really try to hone in on is that we really have the power to make that choice to make a difference. You know, if someone isn't happy with their smile or it's an insecurity, we really have have the, the power to make a choice and, and start a transformation. And I think that goes not just with the smile, but for so many other parts of life too. We're more powerful than we think. <laughs> yes, well, listen, um, like I said, I lead with a smile. Um, and I'm not sure why I, I'm such a smiley person, um, but I don't even know that I'm smiling. And people are so drawn to me because of my smile. And it's even when people come on uh, um, on the video, the first thing they notice is me sitting here smiling. <laughs> and it warms them and it welcomes them. But um, you're doing a smile makeover. So what I'm thinking in my brain is that if somebody comes for a smile makeover is because maybe they have crooked teeth or 
maybe there's a reason that their smile is not good. So can you explain to us what exactly is a smile makeover? So a smile makeover can mean a lot of different things depending on what the patient needs. You know, there's such a wide spectrum of things we could do from the simplest thing of like a whitening or a little bonding to a full smile makeover with veneers. And even just to go beyond that, I mean, there are people that need full mouth reconstructions that happen after say something like trauma or going through a disease or treatment for something, bulimia, um, you know, or have a lot of extensive work from say 20, 30 years ago, those happen to be my favorite. I love projects and I love taking people from, from point A all the way to point Z. Um, so, so it really runs the gamut. And you know, the things that people come in for are maybe teeth that are slightly discolored, maybe a little bit crowded, like overlapping. Um, you know, maybe they don't like the shape of their teeth. They don't like how their smile sort of flows with their face. Um, people come in sometimes with teeth that are missing. So there, there are many reasons why people come in and many different things we can do. And each treatment plan that we have is really tailor-made specifically for that patient. So it's not really like a cookie cutter approach. So it's not like everyone gets veneers. You know, there's so many other things that we can do. What exactly is veneers? <laughs> is that new teeth? <laughs> That's a good question. Uh, veneers are... Thin shells of porcelain that are placed right on top of the teeth, um, you know, to kind of mask the color. We can change the shape. We can lengthen teeth. You know, veneers can broaden a smile. So we can do a lot more with veneers than we than we can with any kind of bonding material. So it's it's something that we put on. It's a permanent solution. It's it's not reversible, um, but it really does give. A, a big impact and can make a beautiful um, difference. Wow, it's the first time I've heard of it. So that's amazing. So take us through um, someone that, um, you know, maybe have overcrowded, uh, an overcrowded mouth, because that's, you know, in my culture, that's what I see a lot. Their, their teeth is is overcrowded. And, and maybe when they were younger, um, their parents didn't have money to give them bracers because bracers, you know, kind of fix your teeth. So they come to you, um, maybe they're going in a Miss America pageant or, 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 or something where they want to smile broadly and not think about their crooked teeth or whatever. So um, take us through something like that. What would you do to help that particular um, patient? So, you know, crowding is an interesting topic. Um, I would say that if it's minor crowding, like a little bit of crowding or a little bit of spacing or a little bit of overlapping, that's something that could be taken care of with what we call like Invisalign, which is a system of clear aligners that moves the teeth sequentially. If it's something beyond that and there's a lot of crowding, it's always best to see a specialist like an orthodontist that can actually do conventional braces or use Invisalign in a way where it's optimized and moves quickly. So there are a lot of things that orthodontists have in their toolbox that, for instance, I don't have as a cosmetic dentist. So when appropriate, I usually refer patients like that out to our handful of specialists that we work with. Okay. All right. So that makes sense. Okay. So, so when you're coming into the cosmetic dentistry, you're, you're doing uh, minor fixes. If it's something major that you've got to extract the tooth or because a lot of times that's what they do. If it's crowded, right. You got to take some out or something like that. Then you would re 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 refer them to um, the orthopedic specialist. Okay, I got it. All right. We do the cosmetic portion. And along with that, there may be other things that, you know, need to be done. So if it's like surgery or root canals or orthodontics, we have a pretty good network of specialists that we trust and work with for many years that we refer those cases out to. So I pretty much do the cosmetic portion, the part that I'm comfortable with, the part that I feel I'm best at. And then I also mm -hmm. start allowing other people to do what they're best at. And so we refer that out to our specialists. So yeah, you're totally right. <laughs> okay, so that's great. I'm glad I asked that because yeah, when I was growing up, you know, I grew up in Guyana, which there was no dentist there. So most of the um, uh, people had some kind of 
crowded situation, you know, um, you know, in the United States or in Canada, um, where I, you know, I spent my young adults, of course, you can go to the dentist, but even then, um, a lot of times, if you don't have a dental plan, you, those things are expensive and sometimes your parents can't afford it to, um, take you there. So as you, as you get older and then you can afford it, then you can, and you want to improve your smile. That's when you would come to a cosmetic dentist. I love that. I love that. So, um, in addition to the smile makeover, um, you also do something that's called anti-aging dentistry. Again, these are all like the veneers were new to me. Anti-aging dentistry is new to me. So tell me, and uh, everyone that's listening and watching, what that entails. <laughs> yeah, definitely. You know, um, anti-aging dentistry can be a new term for some people because it's not normally used. It's not a very common term. Um, what it refers to is really taking years off of the smile by, you know, restoring it to its natural function, restoring any volume that's been lost. You know, one of the first places that aging shows up is the mouth. We see discoloration, we see chipping, we can see missing teeth. You know, if a patient grinds their teeth, now they've gotten a little bit shorter, that affects how actually the lower third to half of the face looks because you don't have that support. So when we refer to anti-aging dentistry, what we're talking about is restoring what's been lost, fixing any chipping that's happened, restoring volume, getting back to a color that's youthful um, before all those years of staining. And that can really take about 10 to 15 years off of a face. Yeah, yeah. So, um... You mentioned um, earlier about some of the things that you do in making over the smile is whitening. So why why does whitening take so many years off of, of the face? I mean, what's the science behind that? <laughs> Good question. Whitening is actually one of the simplest things that we do in the practice to really give people that immediate boost. It uses hydrogen peroxide um, to sort of lift and oxidize the stains off, any external stains that have accumulated over the years, whether it be coffee, tea, red wine, um, it's an oxidation process that lifts those stains off. And um, it does have an anti-aging effect as well. It can make you look instantly brighter, instantly fresher, and you know, definitely take a couple of years off. Definitely not as much as veneers or something more extensive can, but it's always a good starting point. You know, being conservative is always nice. Yeah, yeah, because that's, that's where a lot of people have been going now with, um, you know, the whitening, um, the teeth whitening and and even toothpaste now has got the whitening format format on that. So that, that's awesome. All right. Yeah. Now, um, you also say that the dental health um, affects your overall health. So um, I understand that as far as you know, gingivitis and those things, but you, you mentioned earlier, but that's not really your um, specialty. You, you, you send those type of patients off. So in the cosmetic dentistry, how does dental health affect overall health or, or what is your portion with that? So when patients come in for cosmetic work, I mean, I always say that health is the foundation of all beauty. Uh, you can't have a beautiful mouth without having a healthy mouth. So that really is our philosophy. We're really about restoring health and beauty. You know, um, a lot of times issues that are happening in the body can show up in the mouth first, for instance, inflammation that is happening in the body or other autoimmune diseases can show signs and symptoms in the mouth first. And then conversely, things happening in the mouth um, can, can manifest and express themselves in other parts of the body as well. So for instance, you know, there's a big link between oral care and oral health and cardiovascular or heart health brain health, which is an unknown fact as well. So there is a real link between oral health and systemic health. And I always say, you know, taking care of your mouth and your oral health is so important with just overall care, overall self-care and systemic health. Yeah. Yes. I, I, I absolutely agree. So yeah, when you go to the dentist and they're checking your mouth, they are looking you know, behind your tongue and under your tongue. And a lot of times 
they can even pick up um, some cancers. You're very right. And of course, they always warn you about the inflammation of the gums because it can lead to some other things. So yeah, I mean, I was just wanting, I was just curious about um, how does that um, lend to a beautiful smile, for instance, or, you know, aesthetically perfect teeth <laughs> or something along those lines, right? Yeah, so. That's a, um, that, that's a good point because a lot of times just by restoring health to the smile, a byproduct of that just naturally is a more aesthetic smile. So again, my philosophy is that health really is the cornerstone of beauty. Yes, yes, yes. Also gives you some things to smile about. And you talk, um, you know, I didn't, I didn't go into it, but um, we can go into it now. You talk about how a beautiful smile um, gives you confidence. So, you know, if you're, you're not healthy or you've got cracked teeth or crooked teeth or stained teeth and you don't want to smile, you know, it, it, it evades your confidence. But, you know, think of someone walking down and, and standing for Miss America or Miss Universe and they've got beautiful smile. You know, it gives them a whole lot of confidence. And, and I see why um, your services are so important there. So can you can you touch on that for a little bit? Why um, you feel that you know a, a perfect smile um, and healthy mouth gives you confidence? <laughs> yeah, I mean, a hundred percent. So yes, we work with we've worked with the Miss Universe organization, the Miss America organization. And I get the privilege of seeing a lot of these women, um, you know, in the process of building their confidence getting that level of comfort to be on stage in front of thousands of people. One of the, the keys there is having a smile you're confident with. You know, it's really a matter of just eliminating any insecurities that could potentially get in the way of being your fullest and best self. I mean, this is all a process. All of these organizations um, are about reaching your fullest potential. And when you have something that is just this insecurity that prevents you from being your best self, it really does get in a way. So we try to, to get those limitations out of the way so people can shine and really be their best selves. And we see that all the time, you know, we've restored smiles. People have had insecurities sometimes for their entire lives and feel like it's held them back. And then many times when we've done these smile makeovers, their personality is brighter. They've taken new leaps with work. You know, they've taken risks they wouldn't have taken otherwise. And I always say this, you know, the smile is just one way you can change your life. I really feel like starting with a smile sometimes is really the portal or the gateway or the impetus for people really just doing full life transformations. I mean, I think you kind of have to start somewhere. It's oftentimes like, you know, sometimes you see people make other changes in their lives, whether it be their physical body or mm -hmm. moving to another state or taking a new job or, you know, all these things you can do in your life could be the starting point of a 360 transformation. And with what I do, I get to see the smile a lot of times as that beginning point. Yeah, that's amazing. That's amazing. It's very, very true. And I like the fact that you touched on some other things too, because yes, if you um, are not happy with your body, then you're not going to be confident. And when you lose weight, then you also have the confidence. So think of a person that's just you know, first of all, they have the body makeover and then they get a smile makeover. And uh, my goodness, they're, they're, they're hitting the top lever as far as confidence goes. So that's, that's amazing. Yes. Yes. The smile is like, a, like, a, you know, I've got a great smile. I haven't done anything to it. It's, um, it's natural. Maybe I can go and get some teeth whitening or something. <laughs> But um, <laughs> but my smile is um, I, I know that yeah it um, gives me confidence it, it 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 starts conversations anywhere that I go people are always you know drawn to me and and talking to me and because a smile is always on my face and I'm not even aware that it's there it's just my my well that's a beautiful 
disposition to have. But I was going to say that, you know, when you were talking about the different changes you can make in your life, like I'm a huge believer in the power of transformation. I think that we really, it, it is a choice. We don't have to be stuck in whether it be things we're unhappy with or uncomfortable with or different patterns. We're like, we really do have the power to make that choice, whether it be, like you said, a new smile, changing your body, um, whatever it is, you know, it's just it really, you know, that expression, like you're one decision away from a different life. Like I truly believe that. That's true. That's good. That's good. I like that because yeah, instead of sticking around, <laughs> Yeah, I'm laughing because I was looking at my body the other day and I'm thinking I'm not don't like it that much. And I'm thinking, hey, you can always buy a new one. <laughs> you don't need it. But, but you know what? If you did want to do that, if you did want to say do that, that's totally fine too. I think there's a lot of stigma these days with uh, people's choices and choices they make to feel better about themselves or the way they want to show up in the world. And um, I think that slowly removing that stigma around people actually being who they are, who they want to be, um, is something that we, we need to all be cognizant of for sure. So if you did decide to do that and you did decide yeah. to buy that new body or get that new smile or make that decision to live your life a different way. It's your, and, and I think we all need to give people the freedom to do that. Yes, I agree because, you know, um, anybody that's on social media knows that nobody is stuck with, um, uh, you know, once they have the funds, I'm assuming that nobody is stuck with you know, being unhappy about anything about them, their lives, you know, whether it's whether it's your smile, whether it's your body, whether it's your breast, whether it's your butt, whatever it is, you can just buy one. <laughs> so I like it. I like that we're talking about cosmetics here because, you know, we're talking about the mouth, but, you know, a, a, the a cosmetic, um, uh, you know, the industry is head to toe. <laughs> You know, I have a friend of mine um, uh, that that someone told me that <laughs> that she went to Turkey and got everything done, head to toe. <laughs> no, exactly. But, you know, a point that I'd like to make is that this doesn't just go for our physical bodies and our physical selves. I really think that choice to change um, is deeply internal and can be deeply internal. You can change your mindset, you can change your life path, you can change your career path, you can change your business path, you can change your social circle, you can change your life partner, you can change You can change anything about your life. So, so I, I think that it's easy to visualize it and see it physically, right? Intangibles are a little harder to see, but just as important, if not more important. I mean, I really think that's where it all begins, you know, change from the inside out. Yeah, well, well, I agree with that totally because that's the space that I'm in. You know, yeah. I believe that um, when you meet someone, you're meeting their inner lights and you're meeting their inner person. And then, you know, if they're in a nice body, whether it's a nice smile or a nice body or a nice personality, that's great. But you are meeting the uh, the interior, the, the, the whoever you are inside is going to come out and it's going to flow. And I believe that, yes, you um, need to be um, the best that you can um, in spirituality and on uh, your growth, um, personal development and all those things, which is why I do the show because yes, you, um, and, and I don't just come on and talk, which I learn a lot from my guests, but I'm reading books every day because I stay in the space of, you know, personal development and changing and it shows up in everything you know your relationships change you know your 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 body change your health changes everything changes when you uh make an effort to work on it and be your best self so i definitely yeah. i definitely agree yeah I, I totally agree with you and i think that's a great point about Constantly developing um, self growth. You know, people talk about, say, aging gracefully and things like that. I think that I don't like to say that we're aging. I like to say that we're all growing. And uh, 
getting older with time is really just a process of self-evolution. And as the years go by, hopefully, the hope is we get to that self-actualized potential and are that much closer to meeting the version of ourselves that's really reached our fullest potential. So what you were saying about personal growth, personal development, being in a growth mindset, I think is huge. I think that really is the root of all change. Everything else that is, is expressed physically, whether it be the smile or the body, that's just the cherry on top. Um, yeah. true, true transformation starts inside, right? Yes, yes. I agree totally. Because, yeah, I mean, you could show up and be this perfect specimen. And if you, you know, someone talks to you and you're like dead inside, there's no life, there's no whatever. I mean, that's just, that's going to end there. But if you show up and you have a, a real beautiful light and you, you know, a great person and you're, you know, you're up there spiritually, then even if your body has some flaws, then you can still move to the next level because people are um, connecting to you, the person. So that's amazing. All right. So I love it. So now let's move on to something I've not heard about again, which is dental, what is it? Dental, dental, facial. <laughs> dental facial aesthetics. <laughs> Don't worry about it. I know I gave you a mouthful of things today. Hey, no what that, that is. <laughs> <laughs> so dental facial aesthetics is basically um, a philosophy, a way of, of treating the smile where it's looked at holistically. When we design smiles, we look at the entire face and really think about how can we optimize the features of the face? How can we add symmetry? How can we add harmony to the entire face? So it's not about just designing the smile tooth by tooth and just looking at the mouth as a separate part of the face. We look at the eyes, the nose, the lips, the skin tone, the hair color. We look at people's personalities as well to see what kind of smile is really going to enhance this patient's overall beauty and, and get and match their personality best. That's interesting. That's interesting. So um, dive deeper into that, for instance. So if someone has um, a personality that's, like an introverted personality, or you've got me effervescent and laughing all the time. So how how would you design a smile for those two individuals? Okay. Opposite spectrums. <laughs> Good question. So teeth actually have characteristics as well. You know, there are shapes to the teeth that we would classify as say feminine. And there are shapes of teeth we would classify as maybe masculine. Um, there are smiles that might be a little bit more demure and understated. Then there are smiles that can be more playful or more uh, sophisticated. So, you know, smiles have personalities too, right? So for someone, for instance, who's a little bit introverted, perhaps we would go with a smile that matches that, maybe a little bit more demure, um, have the teeth a little softer, pick a color that may not be as bright, right? Still bright, but maybe a little bit understated. Now for someone who's an extrovert or has an effervescent personality like you, we may pick something a little bit brighter, a little bit more playful. Maybe we would, you know, make the, the front two teeth a little bit more dominant, a little bit longer for that playful look. Um, you know, someone that might be a little girly, we might pick a smile with a lot of curves, you know, or for a guy that comes in, that's like a really serious CEO, um, you know, we may pick a smile that's a little bit more masculine and that's kind of straight across and kind of take those feminine edges out. So there's so many ways that the smile could really reflect someone's personality. So the key there is really alignment. You want everything to be aligned, right? So when we're designing the smile, we want to make sure that not only does it fit aesthetically with the rest of their face, but also is aligned with their personality and more so actually, you know, maybe how they're trying to portray themselves in a world, right? So let's say someone is a little bit introverted, but they want to present themselves as maybe a little bit more uh, extroverted. Maybe we would do it in reverse. Maybe we may put something a little bit brighter, you know? And do you find that if, let's say, that's a good one to, to, to stick a pin on for a minute. So if someone has a, um, an introverted personality, 
And all of a sudden they have this great smile and maybe people start coming to them and talking to them because their smile is so welcoming. Do you find that the personalities start to merge? Yes. Into, <laughs> or did they still stay introverted? That's a very interesting question. I mean, I think everyone is different, but I think, you know, our ability to adapt and change and transform and, you know, is, is pretty unique. And so if someone does want to be a little bit more extroverted, you know, maybe we would consider a smile that kind of reflects that as a starting point, mm -hmm. you know, that's one way to do it for sure. Yes. And then their personality yeah. starts to take on those yeah. characters. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. You start with the smile and like nothing is like you go from zero to 100 right away. They probably would have to take little baby steps and still, you know, start being a little bit more extroverted because now they've got all this confidence, right? They've got a beautiful smile. So that's well, great. I love well, it. When we look at changing our lives, whatever we decide to do, I think it's not like one big leap or one big step forward. It's really a series of mini micro decisions along the way, little pieces of the puzzle, little compartments. And I think the smile is just one piece of the puzzle. I think there are a lot of other things that go into changing your life, you know, but um, the principle is still the same. It's about making a decision, making a choice, you know, mm -hmm. it's what that grander vision for your life is and how, for instance, that smile plays a role or how other things play a role. Yeah. So it's definitely a series of like micro decisions for sure. Yeah. I like that. Yes. You know, you, you have an end goal. And, uh, you know, making over your smile or your face is just one of them. And, um, uh, you know, the, the one notch, I should say, on the on the journey. And um, you start there because, yes, I absolutely I absolutely do believe that. I believe that um, we should smile. We should laugh. It's good for your health. Um, it, it's good for, you know, relaxing. It's 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 good for a lot of things. And there's people that don't smile regardless whether they lack the confidence, whether, you know, they think that their, their, their smile is terrible because something they've got going on in their mouth. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, so that's beautiful. Now, um, we talked about um, uh, you work doing cosmetic dentistry for um, uh, or big organizations like Miss America, Miss Universe, the uh, um, New York Giants, cheerleaders. But let's say someone is listening right now and, um, you know, they're not going for a pageant. You know, they just want um, uh, maybe to feel more confident about themselves. So what are some of the reasons that people come in to see you? So people come in for multiple reasons. It's not just, you know, people competing for Miss America or Miss Universe that come to see us. We have people that come in from all walks of life with so many different stories. And that's actually my favorite part of this is really getting to the root of why people do this. It's really so, it's such a privilege to be part of that story with people, part of that story of transformation. Um, Cause it really does run so many times deeper than just the smile. So people will come in simply because they don't like how their smile looks, right? But it can go a lot deeper than that. They could have had this insecurity for years and years or their entire life that's really affected their confidence, really affected the way they feel about themselves and maybe prevented them from taking that next step in life. You know, um, people come in because they have health issues with their mouth as well. It's not just about how the smile looks. They can have underlying issues that affected the health of their teeth, whether it be genetic or lifestyle things and now have, you know, a mouth that they might be overwhelmed with. And uh, frankly, those are some of my favorite cases. And I, I love taking patients from completely from A to Z. It's truly like my favorite thing to do. Um, so, you know, or sometimes there are patients that come in that have recently undergone uh, treatment for say cancer or, or bulimia or whatever it is that has negatively impacted their smile, you know, and now it's a matter of rehabilitating that smile. And that becomes a starting point for healing a lot of times. Yeah. Yeah. So that's good. Right. Yeah. So I like that. So, um, yeah, if you are not happy with your smile, if you feel that you don't smile a lot because, um, 
of an insecurity of maybe you don't know how to smile. <laughs> you know, um, I have a son-in-law that doesn't know how to smile. I mean, whenever he smiles, he just puts his face up like this. <laughs> and I don't think that there, there is anything underlying uh, the reason he can't smile, but some people just don't know how to smile. So yeah, whether it's you don't know how to smile or, you know, you're, something is wrong with your mouth or your teeth or whatever, um, uh, what Dr. V and I are saying is that, yes, um, if there's something you don't like about yourself, you fix it, whether it's an internal thing, whether it's an external thing, but you have the power to fix it. So you start the conversation. And um, from what I'm understanding, um, uh, you you designed the whole thing. You designed the teeth, you designed the smile, you designed the facial thing, and it's just not not just going in and, you know, getting teeth whitening. So it's beautiful. All right. <laughs> yeah, so anything you want to add to that? Yes, I was just going to say, you're totally right. There is, it's a very well thought out process. Uh, like you said, patients come in and we really fully redesign the smile, taking into account so many other things. So it's not like people come in and we put some veneers on haphazardly or, you know, we definitely plan it out to make sure that it's unique to that patient. A lot of effort and a lot of thought goes into that planning phase. And then also, you know, our ceramics that we work with, gosh, they work so incredibly hard to get these to look natural. Everything is painted on layer by layer with a paintbrush. So it's truly a part of what they do. So I have to give them a lot of credit for making these smiles look amazing. Oh, I see. That's awesome. Yes, that's awesome. So um, how can listeners connect with you? I know that you're by Costal. You, um, you have locations in New York and Beverly Hills. But I'm assuming that you're, um, do you have an online, online, can somebody from Florida get your services? <laughs> yes, actually, we have a ton of out-of-state patients. We have a lot of patients that even come in from outside of the U.S. So we're very accustomed to seeing patients from all over. Again, some of my pa favorite patients, too, because I get to meet people from kind of all over and hear their stories and be part of their journey. So if patients do want to find me, um, they can find me on Instagram. It is Dr. Victoria BDS. Dr. Victoria BDS. And I would say that is the easiest way. All right. Yes, I follow you already on Instagram. So um, I will link out to your page, um, your Instagram page on the show notes. And uh, what is your website? It is VeitzmanDDS.com. V-E-Y-T-S-M-A-N-D-D-S.com. So it's just my last name, DDS.com. Awesome. All right, Dr. V, this has been a very illuminating conversation. I mean, uh, um, I'm glad that I don't have to go run out and and um, and get a smile makeover right away. <laughs> I'm already halfway there, <laughs> right? But yes, um, I will definitely um, look into the teeth whitening um, that you offer. Um, uh, yeah, so I will definitely um, hit you up on 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 your website. Um, all right. So just in case you guys didn't hear that, um, you can connect with Dr. V on Instagram. I will link out to her Instagram page as well as her website. And yes, um, uh, follow her. And, you know, a smile is um, very, very important. I, I call this segment the power of a smile. And the smile has a lot of power. Can even win you Miss Universe, huh? <laughs> you can't be going up there and don't know how to smile <laughs> or don't have confidence in your smile, right? So that's basically um, uh, what you need to do. So Dr. V, thank you so much for being on the show. Thank you so much for, you know, um, transforming our minds about, um, you know, cosmetic dentistry and um, the fact that yeah, if, if if you don't like your smile, if you don't like something of the, about, you know, the, the way your it fits with your face or any of that stuff, then you can do something about it. So start the conversation. Um, uh, so any last words before we wrap up? What what's that? I said any any last words before we wrap up? 
No, I mean, I think we covered a lot of it. I mean, thank you for having me on and talking to your listeners about the power of a smile, smile transformations. I think a lot of people underestimate how, you know, gaining more confidence through your smile can really affect your life for the better. Yes, yes, yes. It's what people see. And, you know, the eyes are the windows to the soul. So I like to say, I like to say the smile is the window to the soul. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, 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 it is. So it's what the first thing people see and it makes, it forms their opinion of you. So I'm glad that I was able to showcase Dr. B's work and to bring this to your consciousness. So now that you um, have it to your consciousness, I hope that everyone goes out there and gets a beautiful smile. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. B. Thank you guys for tuning in to Transform Your Mind, to Transform Your Life. Um, a transcript of my conversation with Dr. V will be on the show page, blog.myhelps.us. Um, uh, so definitely, if you missed something, then just go on there and, and check her out. And definitely follow her on Instagram. Um, yeah, she puts out some good content on there. And if you're interested in, um, in um, a beautiful smile, then definitely reach out to her. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Dr. V. Until next time. Namaste. <laughs>